Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Civil War. We are on to the main Union attack on the Confederate lines at the Battle of Second Manassas. We've held off against the Union, or successfully attacked the Union on the first day of the battle, and now General John Pope is sending his main body against General Stonewall Jackson's corps along the sort of unfinished railroad and uh, defensive positions uh, at Second Manassas. Now, this is from a live stream that I did a couple of weeks ago, actually maybe a month or so ago. This is actually part 20. The last couple of episodes we've been looking at the Battle of Fredericksburg, which was the historic Battle of Fredericksburg. But with this particular video, we are returning to part 20 of that Let's Play series that's been running for quite a while. So uh, we finished up Fredericksburg and it's back to the campaign that we've been playing through. Uh, now, I had intended this to be my top five most played uh, games of 2016 video, uh, but frankly, I started watching for the first time The Man in the High Castle, and I've been watching a lot of it. I'm kind of binging on it right now, and I'm actually going to be unable to be at my computer for the next couple of days. So I will not have that out until the first week, uh, sometime in the first week of January, and then shortly after that my most anticipated games of 2017 will follow as well. So I know this is coming out on, on New Year's Eve, so you know, Happy New Year to everybody, depending on when you're watching this. And uh, I'll just sit back, jump back into the stream, and hope you guys enjoy. Uh, I'll catch you guys at the end. Thanks. Aids and troops all along here positioning, you know, anchored to this flank, is we'll take the regulars and we'll move them here to guard this gap. And then this other gap may need to be guarded by artillery. The problem, again, is I don't have a good elevation view. Um, it doesn't look like it's that much higher here than here. So why don't we do that? We're going to move this artillery between our lines. Just a little bit in the rear. And then... We'll move this brigade between our lines here. Again, just a little bit in the rear. This artillery actually looks like it's on a bit of a slope. So that may... Hmm. What we could do is we move the artillery there and we just move the infantry back as a reserve. And then they can shift to either flank depending on where the risk is. What do you guys think? Artillery shoots over friendly for troops. I'm not aware of any, um, you know, any risk. You're right. We could use the railroad cut. We could advance our brigades forward. But we don't have enough men. So we'd need four brigades to, to man that. We've got three. Yeah, we do have four brigades. And we can always fall back on these defensive lines. Okay, so then the railroad cuts will act as a solid defensive line that links us all the way back up here with our southern flank, with Hill's Brigade down here on the flank, without much of a gap. So that will work. Um, I suppose artillery can still go here. And then these guns can move into this wooded area here. I think that makes sense. Do we run them into position or do we march them? That's the question. Is I don't know how close the Federals are. These actually give us better cover, I think. So if we go to these, these earthworks, damage resistance 25%, cover bonus 75. What are these? What's the... These give us a cover bonus of seven. So they're the same. There's no difference between this railroad cut and these defensive works in the rear, except they're in the rear, so theoretically we can fall back on them. If we're pushed out of our positions, we can retreat back here and hopefully reform a defensive line before the enemy breaks through. I don't think our reinforcements are going to show up necessarily on this day. I could be wrong. But our reinforcements are going to probably show up around here but I'm guessing it's after the two hours, because historically Pope attacked Jackson for two days. Whoops, I just hit my CD tray. Historically Jackson attacked, um, or Pope attacked Jackson for two days before Longstreet's attack went into place. So I wouldn't be surprised 
uh, certainly this is eight o'clock in the morning right now. This two hours isn't going to be enough till Jack, till Long Street shows up. Okay, so. All right. I don't think the woods are any more invulnerable. Oh, cover 150. I, I'm trying to defend like the Confederacy did historically, guys, right? Don't we want to do that? Don't we want to kind of play like real life? No? Yeah. Hmm. So you guys think the woods make more sense? You might be right. Are these guys in the woods though? Do these get the double bonus of being in the woods and in the entrenchment? This these guys do, it looks like. Oh wow. No, they get a hundred percent cover bonus. I don't know what you're talking about. Cover a hundred percent. Huh. We'll do the outer defense. We'll see what happens. I don't know how close the Federals are, so I'm going to run them into position. I know that'll get them a little bit fatigued, but it's not a very long run. See, we didn't even lose any there. I think we'll position our artillery up front because to your point, they do have some cover coming into these positions. So we'll keep most of our artillery in the north. We'll keep our supply wagon back here and move it between forces as necessary and we'll keep our main character kind of in these grove of woods all right guys outer defense it is You're probably right, but what's the fun in just sitting in the woods way back here? I can't see entrenchments and not use them. They're just, it's, it's, it's like a magnet to me. Oh, entrenchments? I'm there! There's a bit of a gap between these lines, actually. Hmm. I wonder if it's because our brigades are depleted. I mean, these guys, it says they have 100% 100 cover. We lost 10% of our force in that first battle. And again, all we have to do to draw is inflict more casualties on the enemy. We don't even have to win. Okay, let's fast forward a bit till we see some Federals. It's a pretty damn big gap between Bartow and Stonewall. It's a little bit disconcerting. I really could use some additional troops in these woods here. And of course, that's where the first Federal Brigade's headed right for. Ok, 
Okay, so Schertz and Kearney and Stale's divisions are reinforcing the Union attack. Interesting enough, they ran forward and then ran back. Are they just running forward to melee? Looks like we get a pretty healthy melee bonus. I mean, they literally just charge straight forward to, to charge. These guys are taking like no casualties, a full volley, and I think they took like three casualties. So that's good. They're just charging right in again! I think my character should ride north. They could use a morale bonus, I'm guessing. Who's their commander? Oh shit, they're attacking the weakest commander too. They're going for the gap. Hmm. That may be ill-conceived, but we'll see. There are woods here, so hopefully that'll satisfy you, Lib. Of course, now there's a brigade coming up our flank. Yes, I'm abandoning all... <laughs> this is dumb. I'm gonna lose real fast, aren't I? Canister the bastards. Oh, they pushed us out of these entrenchments? Damn. I didn't even notice that. Retreat! Hill is okay in those woods right now. Alright, Bragg is hanging in there buying some time. Can't really cross around our flank, I don't think.
And again, I'm using Brag to buy time. Where are you going? No, oh, Bragg is wounded. Run away! I wish I could, like, swap in a different commander or something like that. I'll have to stay close to his men. Let's see here. We've inflicted more casualties on us than they than anyway. So so far, things are going okay. I mean, we definitely have delayed them. It's taken them over an hour to advance as far as they have. They're now in a much more open terrain. Reynolds' division is threatening our right flank. So that's not good. All right, we're going to have to pull Hill back now, I think. I really don't want to pull him out, just because, again, they, uh... We'll see here. He's doing very well. He's pushed back a couple of enemy brigades, and I, there's just this big gap between these two positions that I don't want my artillery to have to hold alone. If I had more units, this would be a phenomenal defensive position. These guys all have full supply. I need to husband my supply, so we're going to move our wagon this way. Everybody on the north is fine. But I've already burned through half of my resupply. So we'll move this way. Where is our right? this threat to our right flank? That's Seagull. Oh, our, wait, our right flank is up here. I'm an idiot. No, wait, no, this is our left flank. This is the Union right, but our left. I don't know. That's interesting. Flanked? From where? We're not flanked. Silly tricks are for kids. Um... Let's see here. They're still not pushing in the south. Eventually, Fitz John Porter's corps, I think, is the one that attacks in the south. Alright, Hill held. Pull him back. They're really pressing our right hard, though. Where's our character? Wait, did we get captured? No, I'm right here. Okay, cool. Okay. Defense in depth, gentlemen. Defense in depth. The regulars are... Holy cow, this unit's inflicted 1,400 casualties? Damn. I mean, troops coming up, I should have left Hill in those woods. They're going right between that wood line. We'll give our art artillery some, some work. Man, these are gigantic brigades. Okay, so these guys are full, these guys are full. Alright, our supply wagon's probably going to run out of ammo as we replenish these uh, artillery pieces. Infantry over here. Okay, so now the Yankees have to form up. They've got they've at least got to deal with our infantry fire. Man, they're dropping like flies. What kind of 
cover do they have? This is not very good cover. Maybe we go here. And they're charging. Colonel Battle is wounded. It says they're routing it, but they're still staying here. Come on, T Turner. Inspire those men. Keep them in their positions. Well, that artillery and infantry made short work of that federal attack. This is a horrible defense position there. I will not be able to hold out against much here. Bragg's troops will not hold against much. Maybe against one brigade, but definitely not multiple. <sighs> All right, 10.30. Is our wagon empty of supply yet? Not quite. Very close though. If, can't believe it's not empty yet. Well, it's going to run out w going by these artillery wagons, probably, as they fire off their ammo. This could be bad. Porter assaults. Okay. For some reason, stalled, he stopped attacking us. Or Pope stopped attacking us. He appears to be mobilized for an all-out attack. We also have spotted large reinforcements, probably Porter's division making a flanking move toward our right flank. Cav cavalry was dispatched to cause a delaying action. If Porter succeeds, we'll be in deep trouble. But here is the good news. Our first reinforcements are near and will arrive in about two hours. It's advised not to engage them. Have patience till tomorrow. The Federals will be exhausted and depleted by the continuous fighting, and all of our reinforcements will be present and rested. Um, is this because I have no ammo left, guys? Is that why? So the fight continues at Stony Ridge. General, hold your ground. God damn it, how much ammo do you need in those wagons? We're empty. Oh boy. Can I tell... I wish I had, like, a command to say, like, conserve your ammo. I mean, they're okay for now, but they're not going to hold out four more hours. And the wagons that are coming up with the reinforcements that are about to arrive are like 40%. Does Porter come like around your flank or where does he go? Or is this Porter here? I guess melees are good, right? It conserves ammo. The good news is, even if we lose here, we get a draw, right? I mean, with the number of casualties we've already inflicted on the enemy. These guys have inflicted 4 to 1. These guys better than 4 to 1. These guys 3 to 1. These guys almost 2 to 1. These guys over 10 to 1. So, I mean, we've almost... In we've, we've already inflicted more casualties than we have troops on the field, so... You know, as long as we don't just everyone die and not kill anyone else, we should be okay. This brigade's going to run out of ammo first. But again, melees are okay for that. These wagons move much quicker when... Are there any enemy supply wagons around I can dash and maybe capture? Wait. No. Oh, there you go. All right, sending some skirmishers out to flank the bastards. Probably not advisable here with the enemy cavalry, but... There you go, Hill. Get some.
<sighs> well, our guns here are almost out of ammo. What do we hold? Another 30 minutes? Is that what we've got left in us, ammo wise? Good lord. Gotta be proud of our men, though. I honestly think maybe we just withdraw off the map. Like, I don't want my guys to die for no reason. At least I'll preserve my reinforce, you know, the, the troops I have until the next fight. Rather than letting them die in fruitless, you know, oh, we have no ammo, let's just sit here and get shot. What do you guys think? Do we just withdraw from the battle altogether? First of the dreaded ammo alerts coming up now for our, one of our artillery units. I'm not withdrawing yet, but you guys, I, I can't not withdraw at some point because the enemy just has all this ammo, or, you know, all these troops, and we have no ammo. Literally. We have no ammo left in our supply wagons. Yes, Jackson. Expose your flank to our to our troops. Heinzman's preparing another attack. What do we have to resist it with? Half ammo, half ammo. Well, this is Seagal. Where's Heinzelman? Okay, so that's going to be on our center. At least our artillery. I don't know. Those guns are almost out, too. The funny thing is, historically in the Battle of Second Manassas, you had something similar where... The Confederate forces near the front were running basically out of ammo and were resisting the Union by throwing rocks at them. Great! Reno's arrived! Oh boy! <laughs> uh, how many fucking men do they have? Oh, our skirmishers are routed. That was a waste of troops. How's this artillery doing? It's burned through about half its ammo. Another assault. Right into help, you know, encourage our troops. Do they have any canister they can fling at the enemy? It doesn't say any enemy or empty, right? Boy, they just keep coming. I don't know how much longer I can hold them off, guys. Um, there are a lot of Yankees, and they are just relentless at this point. But um, it's been about 30 minutes, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut this off. This has been part 20 of my Let's Play of Ultimate General Civil War in the Confederate campaign. Again, the game is in early access. You can find it on Steam. Hope you guys are all enjoying this uh, series thus far. And uh, Bull Run is, is going very it's down to the wire folks this is a battle that as i was fighting it i was biting my nails through the whole thing um and that is you know not not even close to over yet so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut this video off here and we will rejoin the battle uh once uh once i have some time to get the next video up it may be on new year's day it may be a couple of days after new year's day so i know i've been pretty good about putting a video out every single day the last month or so uh, 2017 may start with a, a slight gap of a few days. And if that's the case, I just want to wish everybody a very happy new year. Uh, but until next time, guys, thanks again for watching. This is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.